Oh, good lord. Um, so I am here with Cecilia Polanco of So Good Pupusas. Uh, your tagline being Pupusas, Pupusas with a side of social justice. Yes, yes. Which I think is absolutely phenomenal. Um, so I'm here talking to her a little bit about sort of her story. Um, what what happened to make her get to this place right here? She is a Moorhead scholar. Uh, she is a UNC Duke graduate, right? UNC, my best friend went to Duke. Okay. So that's why I don't hate them entirely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yes, undergrad, undergrad at UNC, and uh, we'll see, we'll see about graduate school. Okay. So um, I wanted to get a little bit more about your story. So we were talking a little bit before about sort of where you started, how this narrative began of you starting off as this first generation Salvadorian immigrant um, who is now running her own food truck. And so I want to get that in between. I want to get that yada, yada, yada. Uh, from the beginning to the end. So why don't we start talking a little bit about uh, sort of the end of high school experience and how you became this Moorhead King scholar. Yeah, so my my parents who who migrated to the U.S. in the, in the 80s fleeing civil war, they came to Los Angeles. I was born in Los Angeles, uh, but I turned one in Durham. So I'm not Tar Heel born, but I am Tar Heel bred. <laughs> um, and, you know, I grew up in the, in the Durham public school system here in Durham. Um, and I loved the experience. I knew that I was part of something diverse and something real. Um, and when I was getting to to high school, education has always been something my parents stressed, um, a very important value they taught to me. Um, and so when I was in junior year, senior year of high school, I was thinking about college, uh, thinking about applying to colleges, applying for scholarships to pay for college. And um, I remember being at the orientation for seniors and seeing this kind of little blurb about the Moorhead Kane Scholarship and thinking, you know, that would be so amazing. You know, a full ride to UNC. UNC um, was my dream school. My older sister went there, so it was kind of all I knew. Um, and it was my dream to go there. So I applied for a ton of scholarships, the Moorhead Kane, uh, the Global Gap Year Fellowship at UNC, a couple of others. Um, and when I received the Moorhead Cane, it was a surreal moment. It was, it, it had so much significance for me personally because I was going to be able to attend Carolina and I was going to be able to do so on a full merit, um, merit-based scholarship and it included summers and it meant so much. Um, and, and you then, talk about, you know, you talk about a student going, getting their acceptance to college and that's always this really ideal moment in their life but for you it's meant something a little bit more right because yeah. you were somebody who because of the stress that your parents had with education and everything you could do something that they hadn't had the opportunity to do yeah exactly they are first generation immigrants to the united states i'm a first generation citizen and uh, college student so it it meant a lot to go to college and it meant even more to receive this this accolade of being a Moorhead King scholar because in Durham Public Schools, in my school, we'd only had one Moorhead King scholar before me and it was about 20 years ago. Oh, wow. So it was a big deal, not just for me personally and not just for the Latino community to have a student who, who has these successes they can rave about, but also for Durham Public Schools. You know that a Moorhead King scholar has come out of Durham Public Schools and not just, you know, Durham Academy or sure, right. places like that. So it had a big a meaning bigger than myself and that was one of the first times I I felt that support from the community and I thought, wow, this is this is bigger than just me. Now you were telling me a really interesting story and, and kind of pursuing this narrative of breaking molds. So you're a Moorhead Kane scholar, you're at UNC, you don't look or talk or act like your typical Moorhead Kane scholar. So tell me a little bit about your experience there and how that impacted what you would eventually do in the later in life. Yeah, coming out of a, of a gap year, being at Carolina was very different. I was stuck on campus. I couldn't buy a ticket to another country if I didn't like where I was. <laughs> um, and I was getting used to being at a predominantly white institution and also learning what it meant to be a more educated scholar and being part of this um, elite, elite group of students on campus. And so while I was at UNC, I, I had an experience where I was working in a group and uh, we were 
checking each other's resume, resumes, um, and the students were having a conversation about Moorhead Kings, and they were there and said, oh, the Moorheads are, they're all stuck up, they're, you know, they're legacy kids, they come from money, and that was not me at all, so I didn't know what to do, it, it kind of freaked me out, um, and I knew we were about to exchange resumes, and they'd see that one of my top things was Moorhead Kings Scholar, and I didn't know, you know, what to, what to say or what to expect from that, but um, I knew that, that I was changing something about what people thought Moorhead Kings looked like or what they acted like or how they spoke or where they came from. And so my first year was kind of made up of a, of a lot of moments like that, a lot of experiences of imposter syndrome, not just in the university, but in the classroom. Also, again, being one of the few people of color, if not the only Latina in the classroom again, um, and it was a struggle, but I, I think that the overcoming that helped me come into my own and um, was the beginning of me breaking molds. So my sister, who, who went to Carolina, she went straight into undergrad, straight into law school, straight into practicing law because she was the first to do it. She had to prove it could be done, but she paved the way for me to have a little bit more flexibility in that. So even though I was a Morehead Kane scholar and I was set for college, I still was able to make the choice to not go to school right away and take a gap year. Sure. And that was the beginning of how my path was a little different. And so we're talking a little bit about these choices that you've had the opportunity to have, which where so many people don't have those choices. So a lot of people would say, well, you're a Morehead Kane scholar, you graduate from UNC with honors, and all of a sudden, you have the world at your fingertips. How does this happen? How does how do you go from being this graduate to doing what a lot of people would consider a step down, which is opening a food truck? That, that doesn't sound like the next logical yeah. step. You know, and I've, I've gotten that narrative a lot, and I think um, it's a misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. Because also when I took a gap year, people thought I was taking a year off, or I was copping out from going into school for some reason, or that I'd be less motivated when I got back. But my gap year really taught me that doing something that is not the traditional next step, whether it's going to college or going to grad school or taking a job, it doesn't mean that you've deviated from the path. You're, you're creating your own path. So that's what my gap year was. It was a year on, a year about service. And um, the Moorhead Kane Scholarship, all of these opportunities I had at UNC made me realize that um, while I was disadvantaged in some ways, there were ways in which I had many advantages. Sure. Um, and so one of those was being documented you know I was I'm the youngest of four sisters the only one born in the United States and had our family been from a different Central American country we might not they might not have um, obtained political asylum in the United States and become residents and eventually citizens and we might have been a mixed status family um, some of us being documented some of us being not being documented and so I realized that that reality for so many in the United States could have very very closely been our reality had I been undocumented, I wouldn't have been eligible for the market. I wouldn't have been able to take the gap year abroad, and I might not even be at Carolina. I'm, I might not be able to afford out-of-state tuition at Carolina. And so I was realizing all these ways in which I was privileged, and I wanted to make a difference. I thought, Carolina is about, yes, it's about getting my degree and my personal and professional development, but what else? Like, I have so much here, how can I make the most out of it? And one of those ways, that I, that I wanted to give back was in the form of scholarships because they had changed my life so much. But being 19, 20 and being in school, not having a job, I didn't have a bunch of money to create a scholarship fund. Um, so I turned, I turned inward to our community um, and really started to learn about cultural capital and what we had to offer that had a lot of value, whether it was in ways that aren't traditionally deemed valuable, whether that's monetary or you know connections or anything like that. And one thing that our family and our community do really well is food. And so I jokingly said with my sister, we could start a business with mom's food. Like it's so <laughs> delicious, people would love it. And she's naturally, like she loves feeding people. She loves to make sure that- Like any mother, fed. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And with a Latina mother, you can't come and say no. Like you, so I would tell people- They take it as a personal affront. Yeah, they're like, what do you mean? don't want to try my food. and so and when you leave your, your plate clean they're like they're so happy yeah and you know so I would tell people who are coming to my house like we're gonna meet my mom um, you've got to come hungry you can't say no to her because it would be rude and, and so so be prepared 
and we're probably gonna have pupusas. It's traditional Salvadoran food. And that, it was kind of like a case study for me, like an aha moment, where I would bring people home and they, whether they knew me as a Latina or they knew me as like their fellow Tar Heel, I'd bring friends home and they'd be like, they, they'd get to see that I was Salvadoran and what that meant. And they experienced that through food. And I thought, this is, this is awesome. Like, could we do this on a bigger scale? And that's when I was thinking, well, we could do this. We could have a food truck. We could sell mom's food. People would be learning about Salvadoran food and culture. Um, and from the profits we make, we can start the scholarship. So I started talking about it more. Um, I started talking about it my sophomore year with um, my, my scholarship with the Morehead Kane. And they began to support me in preparing to do this. So I did some independent research on pupusas and uh, food trucks in the United States. And I also uh, got a certificate in business with their support. And then they, they funded me one summer um, with something called the Venture Summer, where I launched this venture. So I bought my first food truck, I established the LLC, and it was all in with undocumented students in mind, with my community in mind, culture in mind, um, and creating something good with all the opportunities I had at Carolina. Awesome. So let's talk about the actual truck. So you've had this truck for how long? I've had this truck, I purchased it in October of last year. Okay. And um, it took a couple of months to get it updated, um, switched out a sink to get it um, to where the health department standards where they wanted it. And I got inspected, passed inspection March 6th um, in the morning, and I had my first event that afternoon. So where are you usually stationed and how can people find you? We are all over the place right now and that's because I want to be the most available to people. Okay. So uh, we've, and we did catering before I had the food truck. So we've done catering all over the Triangle, Durham, Raleigh, Chapel Hill. And so we cater office lunches, we cater small um, board meetings, things like that, anything in the range. Like, so for example, so later I'm going to Tarboro. I have some friends in Tarboro, so we're going to their brewing company there for their anniversary. Cool. And so people can contact us um, really anyway, Facebook or Twitter. Um, our website has an interface where you can submit a message, um, an inquiry about catering. Usually you'll reach me, and so I'll talk to people and I'll say, well, what are you looking for? What do you want? This is what we can do. Uh, and we'll set it up, we'll put it on the calendar and we'll make it happen. All right, and so tell everybody, what are your Facebook, email, website? Yeah. How can they reach you? How it's can they find It's standard out? so that it's easy. It's so good pupusas at gmail.com. Okay. And pupusas is spelled P U P U S A S. Okay. It's one of my pet peeves when I see pupusas spelled wrong, <laughs> like papusa or something like that. Um, so, so good pupusas at gmail.com. We're on Facebook as so good pupusas, Twitter as so good pupusas. So, um, our, our um, website, so good pupusas.com. Pretty easy, pretty standard. That's how people can reach us. All right, and one last question favorite pupusa? That's so tough. I get that question a lot. Um, and I was, I just got that question yesterday. And I, my answer is that it rotates. And so that's I'll a fair, go. that's, that's a, that's an answer. <laughs> so for a time I'll be like, Ooh, I'm, I'm really into the pork and cheese, into the chicharron. So I'll eat it a lot for a while. And then like, it's time to switch. And so I'll switch to the bean and cheese. And if I'm trying to be a little more healthy, I'll just do just beans. So our vegan pupusa. And then, but cheese is so good because then it oozes out and it gets a little crispy. So I, that really didn't answer your question, but all okay. of them. But you just told everybody about all your pupusas. They're so, so good. And you can stack win -win. them all. You can stack them all and take a big bite out of them. <laughs> just whatever makes your heart happy. So I'm going to try and steal some pupusas uh, from Cecilia's truck now. Thank you guys so much for walking, watching and thank you so much for, for chatting with me yep. today. Thank you.